Hi, I'm Ramil Benaventura, and I'm a math teacher here in New York. And if you want to follow me, I have a YouTube channel, Rampage Math. I'll study about basic learning theories, pers my own personal practice on online learning. Then I'll give you tips and suggestions for non-online learning, and then some resources that you could use. Let's start with theories first. I will talk about educational equity. I will talk about learning continuity. I will talk about basic terms. And then the realities of online learning, iba yung alam natin, ano yung nakikita natin, and how to increase learner and parent engagement, and lastly, how to facilitate connections. Educational equity. Okay? It is also referred to as equity in education. It is a measure of achievement, fairness, and opportunity in education. The study of education equity is often linked with the study of excellence and equity. Mag-excel lang, sinasabi niya, ang mag-excel lang ang edukasyon kung ito ay may equity sa lahat. I'll explain it in the next slide. This is a graphic illustration to show the difference between equality and equity. Yan. Anong pagkakaiba nila? Now, look at the first drawing. Okay, equal yan ha, binigyan namin kayo ng pare-parehong ayuda, okay. pare-parehong help. Pero siya, hindi niya pa rin nakikita. Siya, okay lang. Ito, sumosobra na talaga ang view niya. Ngayon, equity naman is something like this, na ayon, since ikaw ay maliit, bigyan kita ng dalawang blocks na patungan. Ikaw, isa lang. Ikaw, okay ka naman eh. No? Magparaya ka na lang. So, ganyan tayo ngayon sa sitwasyon ng COVID. Ganyan din. Uh, ang ayuda, dapat 1,500. Uh, magkano ba? I don't know. It's 3,000, 4,000. Pantay-pantay dapat lahat. Mayaman, mahirap. Kailangan makatanggap sa gobyerno. Tama ba yon? Tingnan natin. So, in Tagalog, ito ay pagkakapantay-pantay. Pare-pareho dapat. Walang lamangan. Ito, okay lang lumamang yung iba kasi ito ay katarungan. Ito ay naaayon sa kalagayan o sitwasyon ng bawat bata dito o ng bawat tao sa picture na ito. Ganyan rin sa edukasyon. Diba? Dapat may equity tayo. Ang pondo, ang pondo ba pantay-pantay sa lahat ng rehiyon O ikaw, ang sitwasyon nyo, mas mahirap kayo? Uh, iba ang inyong kalagayan, nasa probinsya kayo, kayo nasa Maynila, may geographic location based on the students, based on the population and damning factors how will the will the support the budget the the educational support the curriculum everything it's it compasses everything all about equity in education proceed to the next so next now we know what equity is dapat may naaayon sa kada kabataan ang tulong na ibinibigay, ang edukasyong ibinibigay. Ngayon, nagkaroon ng pandemya, nawala ng klase, paano maitutuloy pa rin ang pag-aaral ng mga kabataan? Kaya nga po, continuity, itutuloy pa po natin. Now, when does this happen? In a prolonged school closure or student absence. Ano pa? Kung may school emergency or national emergency like the pandemic at kailangang ituloy continuation of teaching and learning kahit na may mga interruptions sa normal school. However, listen, may mga considerations na dapat um, tignan natin. Ano yung mga yan? May distance learning programs ba tayo? May accessibility ba yan? What is the type of the materials that's being used? The length of time? The type of learning? Is there also a variety of possible distance learning method? See? Maraming mga factors to consider. Now, the good thing with the learning continuity plan is that you have a guide depending on different situations. Now, the good thing, the Philippines already has one. Sa Philippine setting, alam nyo na siyempre ang learning continuity plan. It all depends on the situation or quarantine situation ng kada, kada town, kada district. Okay, it all depends on that. So, let's focus on this. So, kung hindi naka-ECQ ang iyong lugar, pwedeng 
pure face to face. Ganda yan, no? Parang regular class eh, pumapasok na kayo niyan. And in one of my videos in YouTube, merong uh, nag-share na teacher from China, kwento niya, paano yung bumalik na sila pure face to face. Okay? So, kung hindi mangyari yan, ang, uh, may, syempre, hindi mo pwede isiksik pa rin ang lahat ng sudyante sa isang classroom. Diba? So, in that case, hindi lang, hindi na possible ang face to face, gagawin na natin ang blended learning. Ang blended learning, nakahalo na si face to face sa paggamit ng modules, nakahalo na sa paggamit ng online, yung mga devices na yan, and uh, internet, or nakahalo na rin sa radio at TV. Siguro, kaya nga nakablend, di ba? Yung kalahati ng class, nag-face to face, ang kalahati ng class, nag-online, mahirap yan. Gagawa ng schedule yan ng school o ng district. So, yan ang naman ang blended. Ngayon, kung hindi pwede blended na halo-halo ang sitwasyon, okay, pwede nang gamitin ang distance learning. Pure distance learning. So, what will happen in pure distance learning? So, in pure distance learning, either nag-online lang talaga kayo, o nag-modular lang talaga kayo, o nanunod na lang kayo ng mga educational TV or radio programs. Kasi, hindi pwede makipag-meet sa tao eh. Alright, dyan na kayo. But the thing is, homeschooling is flexible for both. You could use both in different situation. But the thing is, kailangan train ang mga parents and they're willing to help in the in the child's education. Now, sa so US setting. Since sa US setting, nauna kami since March, nagturo na po kami, biglaan po ito. Talagang hindi namin nakalain. And therefore, pero ready na kaagad. Sa website, you would see, there's a continuity of learning, a portion of the New York State. Dahil po dito, ang state ang in charge ng edukasyon. So, meron po silang website, nakalagay po doon kung yung mga guidelines for schools. Ito po mga yan. Pero I just wanna focus on these two. If you're a supervisor, you're a dean, you're a school leader, you might want to look at look into this and you might use some of the resources here. So let's just focus on technology options and non-technology options. So technology options, this is based on New York. So technology offers schools and districts increased options on continuing learning during extended closures. Now, Technology can be leveraged in different ways to meet the local needs. Okay, tignan nyo, andyan pa rin yung equity. Ano ba ang different ways na technology na pwede natin gamitin? Communication, of course, email, phone, online conferring, social media. Ano pa? Um, teacher, student, student, student interaction. Paano sila mag-interact? May office hours na naka-include sa isang school day. May mga check-ins sa simula nag-uusapan ang mga ang mga teachers at estudyante peer collaboration among themselves do the students chat with each other ano pa in the use of technology in terms of instruction then ano pa audio video recording ba ang gagamitin instructional materials are we going to use synchronous distance learning or asynchronous online courses now ano pa learning materials and content digital content or online learning activities. So, ayan ang mga options natin in the use of technology. Next, in New York, meron din silang non-technological options. Kung sa Pilipinas, pwede kang mag-module o radio TV, ano dito? Textbooks, tradebooks, and magazines. Ano pa? Photocopies of text, pictures, and other media. Transcripts of guided lessons. Guided lessons, ano yan? Parang modular Modules din yan, di ba? Photocopies of activity pages, graphic organizers, skill building sets. Yan, I do that. I get my normal, regular book, I scan it, and I send it to my students. That's non-technological. Next, list of hands-on activities students can engage on at home. Engage in at home. Teachers should tailor to developmental stage. Now, the teacher should adapt this according to the developmental level of the students. What is that? Again, equity. Naaayon sa, sa pag-mature uh, pag, uh, pag ng sudyante. Okay?
Okay, depending on their educational capabilities. Ito, this can also be used as uh, assessment. Okay, ano yung mga yan? Documenting an experiment, representing data, creating art, moving, writing. Tingnan nyo, alternative to. Hindi, to. hindi to with the use of technology. Ano pa? Counting, measuring, telling, noticing, sorting, classifying, drawing a map, performing a demonstration, a play, a puppet show, learning about their own family, learning a new skill. See? It doesn't have to be talagang super strict academics. These are other options where students can continue to learn, to learn something new, to educate themselves more, to produce a better version of themselves. Ganda pakinggan na ito. Alright, next. Basic terms. So, ito, napag-aralan na natin to before. Ano ba yung mga basic terms? Synchronous. Isipin nyo lang yan. Sabay-aral. Sabay-sabay tayo mag-aral. Yan. Nagbi-video tayo. Nagtatawagan tayo. Okay? Yan ang synchronous. Asynchronous, KKK. Nako, hindi yung American KKK. Yan ay kanya-kanyang kayod. Kanya-kanyang aral yan. Binigyan na kita ng guide. Ito na sinabi ng teachers. May module ka na. You're on your own. Hybrid, halo-halo special lang yan. Okay? Minsan mag-synchronous tayo, minsan mag-asynchronous tayo. Gagawa tayo ng schedule na naaayon sa iyong sitwasyon, naaayon sa iyong kalagayan. See? That's equity. Remote learning portal. Remote learning portal. Yan ay ang pintuan ng karunungan. Paano tayo? Ito yung daan natin. Paano? Mag-Google Classroom tayo. Kasi nasa Google Classroom, andyan ang mga pangalan, andyan ang mga roster, pwede ko ilagay ang mga assignments dyan, dyan ko i-check yung mga grades ninyo. See? That's parang mini school na yan. Mini school. Video conferencing applications, yan yung mga Zoom, Google Meets, um, Microsoft Hangouts, yan ang mga ginagamit natin para tayo ay magkakitaan, magtagpuan. Ayan. Automated assessment, yan yung mga automatic test na nag-regrade na, chine-check niya na rin. Okay. Yan yung mga kahoot, yung quizzes. Yan. Lahat tayo accessible yan at napapadali pa ang trabaho ng teacher. Learning management systems, ito ay uh, mostly online to. Nakompleto na lahat. May assessment, may test, may practice, and uh, may bayad po ito. Usually, binabayaran ng school ito. Yan. Realities in online learning. This is the real thing na ngayon. Kasi ang dami mong naririnig na ideal thing about online learning, pero sa katotohanan, in real life, kakaiba po ito. Unang-una, number one, not every home has computers or high-speed high internet. Kahit na nga nasa Amerika, kulang pa ang mga computers. Kung may computer man, hindi ganun kabilis ang kanilang internet. Expect mo pa sa ibang bansa. So, ganun din. Kahit among private schools na yan, Catholic schools, sige. Kala nyo lahat meron? Hindi rin. Minsan, mag-aagawan pa yan sa device dahil tatlo silang magkakapatid. Eh, much more dun sa ordinary tao, sa ordinary masa. Number two, younger children require lots of adult supervision. Mahirap yan dun sa mga lower grades, yung mga pre-K, kinder, one, two, three, or something. Kasi, sa instructions pa lang, how to manage the computer, how to get their attention, you know, how to let them follow steps 1, 2, 3, 4. It's not easy. You will need the help of an adult. Sigurado ka bang may adult sa bahay? Okay? Sigurado ba ka ba na yung adult sa bahay kayang gabayan yung batang yan? So, that's the reality. Number three, even great teachers lack expertise bago po tayo dito. Okay? Kahit na yung mga batikang model teacher, ulirang guru natin dati, akala nyo madali sa kanila mag-transition mag, uh, mag, uh, dito sa online learning? Not necessarily. Paggawa ng lesson is different. Pag-implement is different. Okay. So, there, there is always a time to learn stuff. Students with special needs can be hardest to teach virtually. Lalo na may mga may mga learning disabilities. Okay? 
sa regular turo nga hirap na hirap na eh mas lalo pa sa remote di ba wala nang minsan walang gagabay sa kanila they need larger font eh nasa online screen na yan paano pa how would you accommodate yung mga dyslexic yung ma, yung madali ma-distract ngayon wala nang gagabay sa kanila they're on their own paano kung may mga devices okay a lot of things on bombarding them they will need real help Number five, schools provide more than academics. So, baka inisip lang natin, kailangan matutunan nila to. They have to know the content. No, sometimes we forget the other aspects. The emotional support, the social support. Okay? May nagko-connect pa ba sa kanila? That's why nga ho, mahalaga, meron pa rin yung homeroom time, yung advisory time. There's a teacher in charge of the students not just to talking about academics o yung mga guidance counselors may mga assignments din yan baka mamaya nakalimutan nyo na bigyan ng assignments sa mga yan the guidance counselors, the social workers mas kailangan kayo ngayon kamustahan, kwentuhan with the students how are you? these are very important supports okay, ito pa maganda about remote learning we have expectations and what is reality? So, this is a situation in the state. So, ito. So, ito, ito ka, di ba? Ito yung student. Daily attendance. Nagsicheck ba siya? Nagbinabasa niya ba yung Google Classroom niya? Kasi andun na yung mga instructions, eh, di ba? Number three. Binasa niya ba yung mga email ng teacher? Okay? Check. Watch the assigned videos. Pinanood niya ba? Check. Nakikipag-zoom ba kay teacher? Yes. Wrote down notes, yes. Turned in the digital homework, yes. Nag, did, did the student take the online test? Yan ang ina-expect natin. Wow, very linear. They follow all of this in the correct order. But guess what? In reality, it's not going to be like that. I have students who would skip all of these procedures. Reading direction, that, that, that. Bigla na lang click mark. Mark as done. Turn in na kaagad ang homework. Iniskipan niya na lahat yan para lang pagbigyan si teacher. Kunyari lang ginagawa. Pero at the end, ito pala ang kanilang pakay. Use their time to play with their online games, social media, internet, YouTube, whatever. So, be, be careful. Your expectations may not be the reality during this pandemic times. Now, this slide is just telling you or showing you that you will have 1 million activities to do every day, lalo na pag nag online ka. Maraming katanungan ng mga bata. Basahin nyo lang yung mga yan. Um, nasa na yung ganito ko? Ma'am, saan ko ba isasubmit ito? Um, binigay nyo na ba yung instructions? Remember, you will have 97 emails awaiting for you. Now, how teachers can increase learner engagement in a remote classroom? So, ayan na. Usually kasi, ang, ang, uh, ang pakay natin is just to teach. Ito, nag-zoom na tayo. Okay, nag-google na tayo. Google Meets. And then, ito na. Puro-turo lang ba ako? Okay, number one. Post regular announcements. Para mas engage mga bata, they know. Ah, ito, do this this today, ito, do next week, tapos you've announced next week, these are our, our assignments, next week this will be the topic, if they're aware of everything, of what's happening, then they could be engaged ano pa, as I said a while ago, reply early and often pag nagreply ka, after a week or after two weeks wala nang saysay the kids will lose the interest. Wala naman palang pakialam si teacher. Eh. Okay? Very communication tools. Maganda ngayon, there are various ways to reach out to your student. You could email, you could text, within Google, may Google Hangout, ano pa, through social media. I've heard some teachers using social media to communicate, pero Delikado yan, basta may permission from parents and administrators, you could also use social media. Use feedback to build relationships. Okay, ang mahalaga niyan, may feedback pa rin si teacher. Hindi porke 
nag-submit sa isang automated homework sa quizzes or kahoot, you know, wala nang feedback. The, the student should still know, oh, this is my weakness. How will my teacher help me? Yun, nakikipag-appointment ka pa, nakikipag-one-on-one -on -one ka. O anak, alam ko, ang weakness mo is fractions. Sige, one time during my office hour, tutukan natin yung fraction na yan. Physical connection under social distancing. Huh? Pwede ba yan? Minsan, depende kung anong face na yung community nyo. Dadaan ka. Okay, dito sa states, merong mga dumadaan si teacher, nakakotse, nagahay. Kung impossible sa lugar mo yan, dumaan sa tricycle, sa palengke, kawayan mo lang, birthday ng studyante, may mga posters. Oh my goodness, you can be very creative to show your physical connection with the students. Basta nakamask, may social distancing, isang kawai, isang high, isang high five, ay hindi, bawal high five, fist bump, or uh, elbow bump, pwede na yan. Okay? Now, how can teachers increase parent engagement naman in the classroom? Alam natin, the teachers will need the parents para masuportahan ng pag-aaral. Paano natin gagawin yan? Number one, of course, to connect with them. Do you know them already? Have you emailed them? Have you called them? Have you sent some texts? Have you involved them? Kunyari, ginamit mo yung Google Classroom. Sinama mo ba yung email nila para aware sila sa nangyayari? So, connect with them. Number two, provide a schedule. Kung ano yung mga plano mo for the class, they should be aware of it, especially the daily schedule or the syllabus. O kailan ba magla-live, uh, Zoom, kailan asynchronous, kailan synchronous, kailangan aware din sila. Offer tech support. Yan ang problema pag ikaw mismo, the teacher, doesn't know how to support them technically, mahira. Pero, you know, the easiest way. Kung ano man yung alam mo, dapat i-share mo rin. Ay, ganito lang po. Ganito mag-submit ng homework. I-send mo yung link. Naku, ang dami sa YouTube. Ang daming mga educators na gumagawa ng mga how-tos dyan. I-send mo lang yung link. So, hindi na ikaw ang tuturo. Yung computer na magtuturo. Less is more. Okay. Do not expect na yung curriculum mo sa regular face-to-face -face time ay ma magaganap mo or ma-implement mo sa online learning. Not necessarily yung minimum lang po. Okay? The, 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 the Bloom's Taxonomy, higher order of thinking, okay, we always aim to get the, 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 the most critical way of thinking, the highest order. Pero ngayon, medyo mag-adjust muna po tayo. Let's start with the basic na muna. Is there knowledge? Is there understanding? Do they, can they classify things? Kahit yun na muna. Okay? We will get to that at a certain point. Pero now, less is more. If they get the basic, just be happy. Stop. How teachers can facilitate connection between students in a remote classroom? So, you connect now with your students during remote learning, during online learning. Paano yan? Yung connection natin. Number one, Use prompts to spark discussion. Okay? So, actually, habang naghihintay ka ng Zoom, wala pa yung mga sudyante, come on, ask some open-ended questions. How are you feeling now? Okay? How did you feel about the homework yesterday? Okay? How do you feel about not going out? Okay? Where do you want to plan to travel if uh, everything's normal now? Discussion. Okay lang yan. Kahit pag-usapan yung ibang bagay na not related sa topic mo. They need that. Student talk during synchronous learning. Okay? So, teachers are tempted. I know your span of attention is just 20 minutes. So, what will I do? I will just turo, turo, turo. No. Always ask. Q&A. The art of questioning. Teachers, you know that. Okay? The names of the students are there. Hindi mo na kailangan memorizein. Ando na yung mga pangalan nila. <laughs> diba? So, Totoy, ikaw, what can you say? What's the next step? Okay, Inday, what's next? Okay, can you tell me what should I do next in the solution? Talk to them. Malagayan. And just because they're muted, that means 
they, they, they don't have the right to speak anymore. Let them speak. Group assignment. So, mahirap nga minsan dahil puro sa assignment na lang binibigay natin, kanya-kanya, let it be a group. Maybe they could make a video at the end of a certain homework. Okay? So, group videos. Naku, magagaling ang mga batang yan mag-edit ng mga video. They could do TikTok and everything. Throw it back to them. Let the output be their own creation. They could be they could be very creative on how to how to show this this output. Like in math, okay, it could be a group project, a PowerPoint slide, a Google slide, which could they they could work on together. Okay, in an ELA, in an English or a social studies project, gumawa ng dula dula and video na kinonek connect na nila sila na nag edit group assignments. Student-led tech support. Okay, so mahirap. Dito sa online, maraming things na you yourself cannot respond to. That's why one example, what I did is I have a chat room in Google Hangout. All my students are there for that class. If somebody asks about how to, how to like that, hindi na po ako sasagot. Yung studyante na ang sumasagot. Sarap, ano? Carving out time to share. That's what I said a while ago. Let them share their experiences. Let them share their thoughts, their feelings to, to, to build in that connection. I'm still a human being and I connect with you. I hear you. You know, Malaga, I hear you. And if I know something, if I can respond to your need, I will share my advices. Now let's talk about practice. I will show you how my experience began. Okay, what's in a teacher or a student's day? What happens in a regular day? How do I make a lesson plan, the teaching environment, sample lesson plan? What should your work area look like? Some audiovisual instructions, which are very important. Paano ba magbigay ng homework at assessment? Something about Zoom, security natin, and how to do a recorded video for a Zoom class. Let's start with this a uh, feature on Balitang America. Just play this video and you will get an overview on what I did during remote learning. The beginning of remote learning in New York City. Ito po yung nangyari sa akin before. Okay? March 13 was the last day. We even had a Pi Day competi competition and then they said uh, March 16 to 18, wala na raw pasok. And we'll have to report for a three-day professional development. Three days lang. Actually, it just became one day, March 16. We trained everything. You guys have a lot of days to prepare, even months to prepare. Pero kami one day, ito ang Zoom, ito ang Google Classroom. Prepare your lesson plans. Magkanya-kanyang meeting na kayo. Then implement na. Kailan ang implement? March 23. Turo na kaagad. Whether students have a computer or not, we just start. Okay, the daily schedule is I wake up at 8, 8.30, may advisory. This is the one I'm talking about, may connection with the students. Ito na yung kwentuhan kami, naglalaro kami, okay, anong ginawa mo over the weekend. Tapos, first class, second class, third class. Okay, sometimes, you know, some of them are synchronous, sometimes it's asynchronous, so don't worry. It's not everyday Zooming. Then I have lunch, and then after lunch is my office time. That's where I do all the preparations, all the communications, correspondence, video production. So this is a sample student schedule for the sixth grade. Okay, now, as I said, my MWF is my synchronous. That's the time where I do the Zooming with the students. What happens? First five minutes, may do now activity. Okay, it could be a simple math problem or a review of previous lesson. They're on their own as we're waiting. Kasi ang tagal maghintay niya, ng mga sudyante, they come by, by, by trickles. Tapos, ah, pag ready na, they did the do now, share. Okay, how did you solve that? So, unmute, ikaw, student. How did you solve it? And then, 10 to 15 minutes, matagal na yung 20 minutes, remember, 
that's the time you do your mini lesson. Either I play my videos, I model something, I have a document camera explaining something, or I have some cubes or cylinders, I'm showing some manipulatives, yan ang 10 to 15 minutes, and then counting Q&A, tanong-tanong, try some, try some uh, exercises, and then final reminders and homework. That's every MWF. The next Tuesday, Thursday, that's the asynchronous or independent work. So students sign in for attendance. Small group. Means a nagi small group ako. Okay, not all the time, but those who needed help, they know at a certain time I am available. You can zoom with me. Now they're on their own at this point. They're doing a ready-made. Um, what do you call this? Ready-made online service like Khan Academy or Edgenuity naka talaga na po kung ano ang gagawin nila. And these are the time also where they do their homeworks and assignments. Constant communication during this time. They could email me, chat immediately, so nakikita ko na kaagad, Ram, I need help on this, so sagot ka agad. You're on your own, but as long as they're guided, you email them kung ano ang gagawin for that math period. Merong uh, activity 1, activity 2, activity 3. You have to specify all of this. Next is the lesson plan. Okay, how do I do my lesson plan? It's in Google Docs. Naka folder na yan. And the folder would include my my assistant principal. So, she could he could easily see what my lesson is, may mga links na rin yan. If I go to a website, if, go, if I go to a YouTube channel, the links are there. Of course, objectives and standards, the breakdown of what videos to watch, even the documents, the homeworks, naka-incorporate na rin yan. Nasa Google Doc ba yan? Or sa Google Forms, it's all there. And then, I post it daily in an email and even in Google Classroom, Doon sa stream, naka-announce na kung anong gagawin nila. Sample lesson plans, these are links. Now, the teaching environment. How, how does the, the teaching environment should look like? Number one, surround yourself with teaching learning hardware, software needed. In your laptop, all the things you need are there. May mga shortcut na yan, hindi yung hahanapin mo pa. Like for example, if you're showing something from Zoom, okay, it should be ready already. Not just when you do a screen share and then you're searching. Delikado pa pag may nakita dyan na hindi dapat makita. Diba? Mga picture mo, mga selfie mo na, na ayaw mo makita ng mga sudyante, <laughs> delikado ka. Okay, conducive and practical work area. Dapat yung paligid mo, ito, meron ako ditong, uh, ano ba to? divider kasi ayaw ko nang makita niyo yung mga tambak na labada sa likod. Okay? Your physical appearance, sige niyo nakapolo ako ngayon, maayos ang suot ko, hindi niyo lang alam ano yung nasa baba, pero malinis 'yan. Naligo ba ako? Hindi niyo alam. Pero tingnan niyo, mukhang maayos, mukhang malinis. Agenda book, meron na akong isang notebook na nakasulat lahat doon ng things to do, checklist, um, schedule, appointments, ayan, meron kayong agenda book. Now, sample to, I saw this, some teacher online, naglagay pa ng blackboard, ayan, may background pa sila dyan, lahat ng books niya, nandun lang, accessible, ito, may document camera siya dyan, ito naman, ano pa, near the window, para may hangin, ano pang something, may pa welcome, welcome pa, word wall sa background, this teacher has a whiteboard on the side, may uh, may, may uh, headphones, of course, dalawa pa ang device niya, okay, so this is yours truly, yan, may TV pa akong bigger monitor, so I could see bigger versions of my students, okay, ano pa, oh, ito malaga, the use of audiovisual direction. It's sometimes it's hard to tell the students, oh, this is what you have to do when you turn in your homework. How do I use my math Google Classroom? Okay, click your math class. Dito nakalagay yung lessons mo. Ayan. Dito nakalagay yung daily reminder, yung stream. 
Ngayon, if you click on this, your lesson plan is there. I'm sharing my lesson plan. Ano pa? Pagbukas ng lesson plan, andyan na yung the date. Titigan mo yung date. Tapos, just follow what it says. It will tell you at the end where is the link for the homework. And then, dito mo ilalagay yung homework mo. See, everything is visual so that the kids could easily understand. Paano mag-turn in ng homework? Picturean mo muna. Tapos, i-click-click mo tong tab na to. Okay? Tapos, ilagay mo sa correct week number. I-upload mo yung work mo. Anong file yan sa matatagpuan. And then, at the end, ilalagay mo yung homework mo doon. Idra-drag mo. See? Everything should be visual. Even how to mute. This is for the teachers naman. The student... Now, sometimes you make things life easier, mas madali kung video online. May mga teachers na gumagawa na yan. Like for example, I made a, an online how-to okay, picture or scan your homework. Paano bang diskarte niyan? Okay? Kasi ito, may nakakatawang video kong ginawa. Ito ang mga problema ng mga teachers. Pag natanggap na nila yung mga homework ng mga bata, iba-iba. Okay, so these are very visual. In short, it is a video. Okay, this is my own experience. It works for me, but I don't know if it will work for you. You have to adapt, okay, experiment on what's good and not good, and then at the end, do what's best for your class. I do a one big homework for the whole week. It doesn't have to be every day, but some Monday na janayan, it's due on a Friday. And then what do I use? I use the current textbook. Ini-scan ko pa yan, tapos i-upload ko sa Google. Okay, students, different ways to post homework. In-explain ko na yan through the video. How do you grade the homework? Minsan, iisa-isahin mo. Okay? Minsan, just for submission, depending on the type of homework. And then, ano pa? Ipopost ko na yung results sa Google Classroom or sa, sa Schedula or Pupil Path. That's our uh, grading, uh, grading app. Okay, pag may mga, if you use the automated assessment like Kahoot or BrainPop or quizzes, no need to grade it kasi the computer will grade it for you. Ire-record mo na lang sa record book mo. That's the homework discarte. Assessment. So, sabi ko, you could do, I do it every Friday. Okay, starts with a quick Zoom meeting. Minimit ko muna sila bago mag-test so that I could give quick instructions. And it's done during math time or during their free time. Now, depende yan. Kanya-kanyang diskarte. I even heard a teach. I saw a teacher who would uh, ask the students to print it, do the work, while yung camera nakatutok sa whole body. So, during math time, nakikita mo nagpe-pes yung bata talaga. Next. Open resources. So, depende sa inyo yan. Sa akin, okay lang may calculator, may scrap paper, open ang notes. You could use um, online apps which are free or you could pay for it. And for formative assessment, ito na ang different discarte. Polls everywhere. As formative naman is just to know kung ano-ano ba, naintindihan nyo ba? May iba-ibang ways to do that. For example, fist to five. Okay, everybody task kamay. Pag five, you mastered the lesson. Very well understood. Zero, you know nothing. One, two, so it's a gradual increase of understanding. So, at the end of the lesson, case to five, buddies, everybody, come on, raise your hand, your fingers, two, three, four, or five. Na-assess mo kung tindihan nila. Quizzes. Okay, give them a quick quizzes. Ten questions, five questions. It's like an exit ticket. Naintindihan ba? Just give them the link. Kahoot! Ganun din. A few questions, give them a, a link, and then they answer the question. Now let's talk about modular teaching and learning because we know not everything would be online. Some of the teaching will be offline. Okay. Let's start with some tips. Number one, the availability of hard and soft copy of the module. I don't know how it will happen. It's um, probably galing sa offices yan, ng DepEd or what. Will they give it as a hard copy ba sa mga sudyante? mail ba ito? Kayo rin ba ay may kopya ng mga, ng mga modules na ito? O ito ay nasa inyong mga 
links sa, sa mga website sa computer. Or we don't know. As long as you have your hard copy and soft copy, dapat malaga yan. Number two, anong format ba ibibigay nila yan? Is it, is, it, is it in word copy or PDF copy? Kung word copy yan, pwede nyong i-adjust. You could still write something on it, edit it, you know, make some adjustment according to your students' needs. Were they distributed? How were they distributed to the students? As I said, na mail bayan o bibigyan sila ng USB? Bubuksan nila sa computer nila? We don't know yet up to this time, right? Now, question is, have you reviewed the module? Have you looked into it? Ito ba ay naakma sa inyong curriculum? And how is it organized, right? Is there a criterion reference sheet? In the introductions, sa simula ba may table of contents, nakasulat ang skills? Okay, the ideal is, and nakasulat ang skills, tapos merong, meron ba itong mga room for accommodation para pag hindi nila nagkukuha ang prerequisite skills, right? So, next. Again, about modular, um, as I said, kailangan nakakolum yan, andun ang standards and skills or concepts. Sa left side, andun ang what module number it is. It could be lesson 1, lesson 2, or lesson A, B, C, however it is organized. Dapat meron ding time frame. I guess there should be a time frame because, you know, students left on their own would really have a difficulty following the pace. So, nakasulat from week 1 ba to, week 2, week 3, from what time to what, what date to what date matatapos ito. And, after doing the lesson, is there a column for what practices they need to do? Nakakalaki rin ba doon ang mga practices? And what assessments would they be doing? Are the assessments already there? At the end, meron bang answer key rin sa likod? So, ang daming consideration, ano? Kasi wala ka doon eh. The book in itself should be a self-guided um, module or a handbook that will make them learn. Is there a schedule or timetable? This one is important so as to guide the students. If not, make a suggestions. Ikaw na magumawa ng pacing calendar. The available of, availability of tools for learning. For example, in this lesson, are they allowed to use the calculator? Kailangan ba ng ruler, ng protractor? Uh, do, they, do the students really have a protractor and a ruler? So why don't you make a a copy one, a cardboard one, something that you could send them para pag binigay na yung packet, ready na yung mga sudyante. How will the assessment be? Oh, yan ang problema, no? Walang computer. Eh. Siguro, actually, hindi naman totally walang computer. Probably once in a while, nakakapag-computer sila. Now, how will they take the test? Is it online ba? Will they go to Kahoot or, or quizzes or some other apps in the computer? Or is it a paper and pen na dapat sinasagot? Ipreprint out ba nila ito, tapos sasagutin nila, and kung sabi na natin, print out, sinagot nila, paano ipadadala sa'yo? Okay, there are some options on how for you to receive those, uh, those homework, pwedeng i-email o i-text sa inyo. That's why at this point, dapat may listahan na kayo ng mga, ng mga cellphone numbers ng student, may listahan na kayo ng cellphone numbers ng parents, okay, emails as well, all the possible communication should be available for you. Also in modular, how is the, how are the lessons rep, uh, represented to the students? Is it co parang conversation ba? Yung exacto ba yung mga yung mga examples step by step ba ito? Okay, is it a problem solving method? If it's math, is it like really from theories to practice or deductive uh, or inductive learning? Na sila discover, you know? Usually, pag ganitong modules, direct to the point na eh, di ba? Ito na ang lesson, ito ang examples, try this, and then ganun na lahat. Next, are the examples enough or do you think students need more? That's why, not just because it's module, dapat may supplementary um, reference pa rin kayo. Yung book na regularly na dapat matanggap nila, dapat matanggap din nila yan. Dahil siguro, correlate nyo rin yun. Tung lesson na ito about fractions, is also in your textbook, this is at this page to that page. Kasi sa totoo lang, minsan hindi enough ang modular uh, way na matatanggap nila. They need more reference, more examples. So, kailangan yung book ipadadala rin. The need to cross-reference with the prescribed math book. Yan yung sinasabi ko. This lesson in the module is the same as the lesson in the actual textbook. 
for or or you know you, you give links kung ano man ang makukuha nila online if ever mag online sila are all these instructions in the packet so pag natanggap na ng mga estudyante yan so maganda merong isang packet isang re recyclable bag andun na lahat ng math materials Andun na yung mga practices, andun na yung schedule, kung kailangan ng ruler, protractor, pencil, ilagay nyo na lang lahat. So, each kid receives a total kit to last, I don't know, is it a whole quarter, a second quarter, or the whole year? As I said, be sure you collect all the cell phones, all the emails of both parents and students. And accountability. How would they take the test? Modular yan. You won't be there looking behind them kung nasagot nyo ba yung test o hindi. Okay? So, you should have a, um, may kasunduan dapat kayo with the parents. So, ipreprint ba nila, sasagutin nila, how will they answer it? Dapat nandun si, si uh, ang mga magulang. Ang magulang ba mag-check? Okay? And you know, that's really on their honesty na yan. No? Honor system na yan. Kung dayain man yan ng magulang o ng sudyante, Sila naman ang ano, responsible niyan eh. They will suffer the consequences kung lolokohin nila ang test mo o hindi. And paano natin ma-check? Okay? Kunyari, natapos na yung test, picture na lang nila sa cellphone. I guess naman, kahit sino sa Pilipinas may cellphone. Kung walang cellphone sa bahay, o si, yung tita mo may cellphone, hiramin na lang yun. Picturean, ipadala sa text mo, then yun na lang ang chichikan mo. Next. Educational Radio and TV. So, ito, kakaiba to, di ba? These are my tips because, you know, wala pa namang gumagawa nito. So, this is the first time we're gonna do this, but these are my tips based on my uh, experience and from what I've seen around me. So, schedule. Meron na bang schedule ang mga educational TV programs na yan? I'm sure your the, the main office of the DepEd will give you a program and dito ang listing ng mga shows, anong channel, okay? At ang mga list na to rin dapat, at ang channel, may kopya na rin ang mga sudyante. Which radio or TV channel will it be shown? Okay? So, nasa, ABC, uh, nasa IBC 13 ba to? Nasa PTV 4? Nasa GMA 7 ba ito? Nasa ABS? Wala palang ABS. Okay, wag na muna yon. So, ano ba yan? Yan ay um, the regular educational shows that they have or is it really direct to the point na teacher na nagtuturo na naka-video? Now, of course, you have to preview preview or watch them beforehand. Kayo mismo, napanood mo yung mga program na to. Dahil the language used in the program will be the same language that you will use when you come back. Baka sa kabilang video, ibang term ang ginagamit. They don't use the term denominator. They just use the number below, alright? But for you, you have to use there should be consistency. Okay? Next, accountability. How do the students take notes? Okay? Paano yun? No? Mahirap mag-take notes. Hindi mo mare-rewind, hindi mo mapaforward ang radio. Kaya you have to train your students as well. Dapat may notes ka na rin. Ganito mag-take notes. Okay? O kaya, um, for example, um, in a household, i-allow mo na rin yung magulang maki-take notes. Kunyari, first, fi first five minutes, si ate ang magte-take notes. Next five minutes, si kuya. Next five minutes, ako. Take turns kayo para hindi mahuhuli sa notes na dapat kopyahin. And since this is math, okay, just copy the problem and do the work after na the show. Okay, I take a picture of the of the of the TV shows. Kunyari pinalabas sa TV, picturean mo 'yon. Okay, and the example, may sagot na, picturean mo na. And then cover mo lang, sasagutin mo, then tingnan mo kung tama yung sagot mo, tsaka yung pinakitang answer key sa TV. Maraming strategies diyan, and you know what? I have a video that you could send to your students. And diyan ang mga tips na 'yan. Kasi mahirap explain sa kanila eh. Just show them the link and they will watch this video. What would be the end product? The, the difficult thing here is uh, how would you assess the students? Okay? So, you have to be creative na rin. So, at the end, gagawa ba sila ng group project na lang? Or um, gagawa silang video na ipopost nila sa social media? Or yung work nila, pinitura nila, pinadala sa'yo? Just be creative. Make their own examples from the given story or presentation. Now, base app based on what they've watched o napakinggan nila sa radio o TV, sabihin mo lang, at the end, magawa kayo ng tatlong examples mula sa natutunan nyo. 
o just make write down your notes. Yung iba nga, yung notes lang na ginawa ng mga estudyante, pinitsura nila, pinadala, yun na, i-assess na ng teacher. Okay? Based on what you understand. Ito yung definition na nakuha ko. Ito yung example 1, example 2. I did problem solving number 1, number 2. Pinitsuran ko, binigay ko sa teacher ko. Okay? It doesn't have to be that rigid na pare-pareho. So, adapt your test depending on what, um, what uh, type of learning they've been using. How can assessment be done? I've mentioned. So for this part, I will share resources. I will tell you something about Rampage Math. Ito po ang uh, YouTube na channel ko po. And then I'll give you some online resources, online in a pinch, and amazing educational resources. Resources. So meron akong Rampage Math. Visit this website. What do you have? Oh, so I've been doing this since 2006. That I'm just doing it for uh, community events. Tapos, I started to focus on math. Just to motivate students. Minsan, kumakanta ako, sumasayaw. Tapos, nung nagkaroon ng remote learning, oh my God, kinarir ko na po. Dinagdagam ko na po ng mga math lessons for my middle school math. So, follow me here. Subscribe and some of the videos here you can use in your actual class. So, ito po ang content niya, 7th grade topics in math, 8th grade topics, professional development for teachers, and some community and cultural activities. This is what I want you to visit. I made 3 videos on the modalities. This is very practical in the Philippine situation. Those who will use radio and TV, panood, ipapanood nyo po ito sa mga studyante at mga parents. Pati, panoorin nyo rin, paano ba ang diskarte dyan? Okay? Humanda kayo, darating na yung mga radio at TV shows na gawa ng DepEd or they might use some other uh, programs which are existing. Paano yung gumagamit ng modules? Hindi naman pwedeng ibigay, oh yan ang module, sagutin nyo na yan. Hindi, the, the, the kids need to be trained on how to use it. So, I have a lot of tips here. Okay, ganyan yan. Ta, ngayon, pag gumagamit ka na ng online, okay, the parents, paano ko susuportahan yung mga anak ko? Nago online sila. So, this link will give you a playlist of those three modalities. Meron pa ako, ito ang maganda. I would suggest this to you. We just don't have time to do it now. The best practices, okay, the best practices, different teachers from all over the US and around the world. I even have a, a, a friend from China. Na, ang magandang experience ni, uh, ni Noel is that uh, after remote learning, after online learning, bumalik pa sa classroom at nag-face-to-face -face teaching sila. Ano yung mga best practice? Ano yung mga gumana sa kanila? Ano yung effective? An ano ang di effective Iba-iba yan. May elementary teacher, may special ed, may science teacher, may college professor, math teacher, yours truly is there, a beginning teacher, uh, a college professor, another math teacher, a pre-K teacher, and a special ed teacher. So, panoorin nyo po ang mga videos na yan and you will get practical tips. Okay, tapos these are online sources. These are American-based, but you know, they got good suggestions. Click on this, click on this, and you can learn more stuff, more than what I taught you now. Okay, salamat sa pakikinig. And my closing video will be this one. There's a link over here. It will just summarize everything that we've experienced during this pandemic, during this lockdown, during remote learning, and how to trust in the Lord because we cannot do this alone. Okay? Salamat sa pakikinig.